key to Hannibal's success was his cavalry, consisting of two main units, the heavy brigade and the light brigade. The heavy brigade comprised of Spaniards and Gauls riding powerful horses. They were armed with a short lance that could double as a javelin and a two-edged sword, suitable for both cutting and thrusting. The Numidian horsemen from North Africa formed the light brigade. This elite corps was the best cavalry of the age. They had very light and basic weapons, consisting of a few javelins, a dagger, and a short sword. The sword was terrifyingly effective in the hands of these horsemen. When the Numidian cavalry attacked fleeing infantry, they would often slash the hamstrings of the unfortunate enemy, immobilizing them and taking them out of the battle. The helpless men were left to die a slow, agonizing death or were finished off later. The Romans feared these men, known as the slingers. They hurled stones and lead bullets at their enemies with deadly accuracy. They would open fire in the early stages of any conflict, withdrawing to join the light infantry before the major engagement took place. The main body of the infantry was drawn from North Africa, Libya, Spain and Gaul. The Africans were heavily armed in the Greek fashion with large shields, breastplates, helmets, greaves, cutting swords for close work and long spears for the first encounter. The Spanish troops used a short double-edged sword, equally useful for cut and thrust. Some of the men also carried a curved saber. The Libyan light infantry were famed for their sobriety and a remarkable resistance to fatigue and privation. They carried the bare minimum of weapons, a few javelins, a dagger, and a small shield called a setre. The Gauls were fierce fighters. Hannibal used them as shock troops for the front line for his infantry, and they suffered the heaviest casualties. Many of Hannibal's men now trained with Roman swords. At Trebia, Hannibal had seen how good they were for hand-to-hand -hand fighting. He wasted no time in collecting them up and issuing them to his infantry. Such was the army that Hannibal led across the Apennine Mountains in the spring of 217 BC. There were two possible routes through the mountains. The Roman consuls for that year Flaminius and Geminus each took an army to meet him. Their plan was to maneuver Hannibal into a position where both the armies could engage him at once. Flaminius allowed Hannibal through the pass, then set off in pursuit, hoping to drive him towards Geminus's army. But Hannibal could see the trap and was determined to keep the two armies apart. To force Flaminius's hand, Hannibal set about pillaging the fertile Chianti region. As soon as Hannibal saw Lake Trasimene, he knew it was the perfect location for an ambush. 2,000 years ago, the water level was higher than it is today. This path, called by locals Mal Paso, Bad Step, was almost at the water's edge. Mal Paso was the only way through a small valley surrounded by steep hills on one side and the lake on the other. Hannibal positioned his troops in the woods around the small valley. He then ordered a party of his men to make camp on the furthest hill and as night fell to light as many fires as they could. The trap was sprung. As soon as the Romans saw the fires in the distance, they assumed that Hannibal's army was trying to escape. In the case of Trasimene, this was an area which, as Livy says, was born, was naturally made for ambushes. The trick here was that no general really expects to be ambushed when he's in command of something like 25,000 men, as Flaminius was. 
Indeed, he probably thought, if anything, uh, that Hannibal was walking into a trap rather than himself. It was an ambush on a gigantic scale, and one finds it difficult to think of a parallel in military history for one on such a scale. At dawn, Flaminius set off in hot pursuit of the lights he'd seen the night before. 20,000 men and 5,000 horses marched two by two down the narrow path into the valley. What happens at the Trasimene is a classic ambush. Flaminius, with a sizable army, is pursuing Hannibal, who he thinks is fleeing. Flaminius is hurrying along the shore of the lake to catch up and force a battle and hopefully win. Unfortunately for him, Hannibal has hidden his men very cleverly along the lake shore, using the terrain. Incredibly, Hannibal's army of 35,000 men waited silently as 25,000 Romans filed past just meters away. Among them were Gauls whose families had been massacred two years before by an army under Flaminius's command. They were itching for revenge. The Carthaginian cavalry sealed the trap by blocking the end of the path. When Hannibal was ready, he gave the order to attack. The Roman army had no time to get into battle formation. Most men were slaughtered before they knew what was happening. Livy, in his History of Rome, tells how a Gaul named Acarius recognized the armor of the commander who had lain waste his homeland. He made his way through the battle and killed Consul Flaminius with his lance. Neither his corpse nor armor was ever found. News of the ambush reached Geminus too late. He sent 4,000 men to help, but they were cut off and destroyed. The remnants of Flaminius's army were driven back by Africans, Spaniards, and Gauls to the shores of the lake. Unable to retreat any further, they were massacred in the water or drowned under the weight of their armor. More than 16,000 Roman soldiers died at Trasimene. 